Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to create a Gantt chart that takes into account work days and also holidays when you are charting it out. So we can see, for example, we have our Gantt chart here, and we have, let's say, a start date 5:12 and 5:16, and we're saying give us a three duration day, and this is going to be work days, and it's going to be respective to the weekend. So 5:12, when you think about 5:12, is here. So with three days, that's the 12th, 15th, and 16th. So the end date is going to be the 16th, right? Now, for the Gantt duration, it's got to chart that all out. It's got to chart it out. If it only charted out three days, it's going to chart out 12, 13, 14. But we want to chart it out for the work days and include the weekends because uh, that's how it's going to look visually. And we can see here the first bar there shows that. Now this is going to be a, a calendar date respective to a U.S. holiday. So there's a U.S. holiday on May the 29th. So we can see here that for 517, if we had a duration of nine days, and we count that 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we're not going to count the 29th, so we're going to count the 30th. So at the end date, it, it counts that as 530, so it's going to end it there. But for the Gantt duration, it's going to be 13 days, right? So it's going to, it needs to count from 517, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? To chart this out, it can't count nine days. So that's why it ends here at 530. So this particular Gantt chart will visually represent it more correctly. So how can we do this? Let's start from scratch. I'm going to delete this and create my table. What I need to do is insert a stat column chart. So I go to insert and go to select a stacked chart. But I'm going to click outside of the table first because I want to add this in after I create the bar chart. So I selected outside the table so it doesn't recognize any data to kind of draw out the table initially. Go to the column, select a 2D stacked bar chart. Right. So bring it over here. Let me bring it down here a little bit and, and kind of make it a little longer. Now I'm going to select the data under the design tab, go to select data. And the first one I'm going to add is going to be the start date. So click on add and the series name is going to be start date and the series value, I'm going to delete this, will be my start date. So that's going to be the first one. Click OK. And my second one I need to add is going to be the Gantt duration. So I'll see, I'll, after I add this, I'll show you how the formulas work here. So I'll go to add and the series name is Gantt duration and the series value is the set of values. All right, click OK. All right, and for my category, which gives me this because by default Excel is going to give it a linear category, I'm going to get my categories from here, the access labels test one, two, three, four, five. Click OK and click OK. You can see that it's drawn it out correctly here. Click OK and I have the beginnings of my Gantt chart. Uh, what do we need to do is reverse this, right? So the task one becomes on becomes at the top and task five becomes at the bottom. So I'll click on my axis, right click, go to format axis and on categories in reverse order. So under the text options for my axis options, select that and it's going to reverse it now. All right, so I'll close that and I'm going to remove. So right now what you see is the beginnings of my Gantt chart. The items in red, the, this is the value, right? You can see it starts on 5, 512 here. If I make this a little bit more representative, because right now by default, Excel is, I think it's dividing it by 10 days, right? 4, 4, 5, 4, 5 to 415, yeah. So it's making those um, separations in 10 days. So let's, let's make it uh, one day, just for this example, just for this to see how it works right now. Click OK or close that. And it's kind of made it a little bit hard to see. And that's because it's going, the orientation is horizontal. Let's make it vertical. So right click, select it, right click, format access. And under the alignment, let's make it rotate. Right? Close this. So let's bring in the chart area a little smaller since it's kind of overtaken it. 
let's let's see. Let me if I click into the chart area. No, that's let me just. Uh, oh, there we go. See now the chart area selected. Move that down a little bit. Now we can see our dates, right? So 512 to 516, right? 512 to 516. That's the first one there. So how do we get uh, the correct duration here, right? The the correct Gantt duration. So you can see that the first value here is kind of manually inputted here, and the second value also, or the second column is also the same. I manually input these here. Now to get the end date, so we can figure it out between with the Gantt duration, this is going to take a formula called workday. So let's see how the workday function works. If I click on the formula bar here and I click on the little tip here and click on workday, it's going to tell us what the workday function does. So it returns a number that represents a date that is the indicated number of working days before or after the date, that starting date. So let me close this. If I look at the arguments that it takes, it's going to take the start date. So in this example, in cell D2, the start date is in B2. So we have our start date there. And the number of days is the date that I enter, this duration date. Now, the holidays, this can either be blank, or you can select a range where you select it, identify some days as holidays. And you can see here, I selected A11 to A12. These are going to be the holidays here. If your particular example doesn't have holidays, you can leave this blank. That's why we have those brackets there. Those indicate that it's an optional argument. But the required arguments are going to be your start date and the days. In this particular example, let's escape to get out of that. In this particular example, what it's going to do is it's going to take this date and add this date to it irrespective of the weekends and any holidays since we have that argument there and give us our end date. Uh, you will also notice that I have a minus one here and I'll kind of explain that. So if I didn't have a minus one here, let's delete that. Right? If I didn't have that minus one there, it's going to take that start date 512 and add three days to it, right? So it's going to add the 12th, which is one day, the 15th, number two, and 16th, number three. And it's going to look at the end date as the 17th. Well, the end date is actually the end of the 16th, not the, the 17th. And that's why I have that minus one there, right? Because what happens when you draw it out, and I'll explain this Gantt duration column, when we draw it out with there, it's going to end it on the 17th, which really doesn't fit the particular um, bar chart. We need it to end on the 16th, uh, visually depicting it ending on the 16th. That's why we have our minus one. All right, so if I do minus one here, the Gantt duration is going to correctly identify that as four days. So it ends it on the 16th here. So that's the visual cue here there because people might see it as it touching the 17th and actually it's going to include the 17th. So we're going to have it touch this 5 16th and it more kind of like indicates or visually represents that it's going to take up the 16th and not go to the 17th. That's why there's the minus one there, right? So this Gantt duration is basically just a subtraction. So we're subtract, subtracting the end date from the beginning date, and that's what gives us our Gantt duration of four days, and that's how it draws it out here, right? So that's why you see it. It draws it out 5, 12, 5, 13, 14, 15, 16. So when you think about it, it draws these blocks out. You can look at the columns here. It draws out 1, 2, 3, 4. When you think about it, how that's going to be visually represented by the chart. So now to make it complete, we really don't need this particular portion of the bar. Just click on that. You can see they're all selected now. Right click. And for the fill, we're going to make it no fill. And also, that's going to leave an outline here. So we're going to get rid of the outline too. So we're going to make it no outline. All right? Let me click outside of the chart. And we have our Gantt chart. Now, there's something that looks kind of weird because we have all this leading space here. And we don't really need all this. We want to kind of want to start close to May 12th. And the way that Excel sees dates is serial numbers. If I click on this and right click, go under format cells, and it's going to see that number as 42867. That date, 512 2017, is 42867. That's how Excel does the math on the dates because it gives a serial number. I want to 
make note of that number, 42867, and I want to change it here on the axis. Right click, go to Format Axis, and for where it starts, we're going to say 42867. Maybe 866, to maybe started a little bit earlier. I'm going to press Tab to execute that, and now you can see that it started there, and it started about a day earlier. Now, that may be the same for the end. Uh, it's about 7.10. Maybe we'll have it stop around 7.11, 7.12. And it's a little bit more challenging here because this is a formula. So what we want to do is I'm just going to copy that. Control C to copy. Bring it down here. Control V to paste. And I'm just going to paste it as a value. And it's, since there's no display formatting here, it's going to display it as, since it's general. So you can, you can see that it's general. It's not displayed as a date. That's why it doesn't display it that way. Let me control Z to undo that. Control Z. And I want to have the ending boundary 42926 here. So click on the axis again, right click, go to format axis. Oh, actually, it's already selected. So let me go and delete that and do 42, maybe 42927. Right? So let me go and scroll over here. You can see that as I executed, or it got executed, part of the date disappeared. So that's kind of good there. Close this and let's get rid of the grid lines. Make it look a bit nicer. Select the grid lines, press delete, and they're gone. And also probably not a good idea to have red. So right click, go under fill, and let's make this fill blue. All right. So there we have our Gantt chart. Now we can change some things here. Let's make this I don't know, five days, right? And that's going to change it here. And we can also change some other dates here. So if I, that wasn't 531, maybe this was 523, 17, press tab. You can see things have changed here. And the dates correspond, right? So uh, let's make it easier. Let's say 527, that was four days. So we count 527. Oh, that's a Saturday. Let's, let's make it 526. That, that may, probably makes it better. We don't want to start on a Saturday. Maybe we want to start on a Friday. Press tab. So now it's started on a Friday and it's four days. So it's going to count 526. It's not going to count the holiday. 530, 531, and Thursday to uh, 6 1. You can see 6 1 is correct here, but it's also got to count the duration of the difference between the end date and the start date, which, which is six days. And it's drawn that out kind of nicely here, right? And since it's counted out to be six days for the Gantt duration for the chart, you can see that it correctly ended it at 6-1 uh, here visually. So there's a way we can create a Gantt chart taking into account work days and holidays. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.